Okay, so I wasn't surprised to see Russia move into the eastern regions of the Ukraine and and take over the Donbass region and, and other predominantly Russian uh, parts of the Ukraine. But I was very surprised to see him move into the Ukraine itself and uh, now approaching Kiev, which I think is a major mistake on his part. And uh, of course, the international community has now stood up and uh, uh, acting you know, against Russia, which is very unfortunate for, for the globe. You know, look, it's a, the supply demand fundamentals of the silver is, is so, so good. I don't think we need a war to move silver prices. And I predicted you know, $30 silver this year before this even happened. So I, I still think that's going to happen. Uh, but it's unfortunate you were seeing metal prices move as a result of this event uh, in Europe. But it's going to cause huge supply chain problems going forward, in my, in my opinion. Well, inflation is there, and uh, uh, it's going to get worse. You know, whether it's grains, whether it's oil, whether it's metals, uh, you know, a variety of different commodities. Russia is a big supplier of multiple commodities to the world. I think Russia supplies 30% of energy to the planet, uh, predominantly Europe, and uh, you know, to cut Europe off to, you know, uh, is going to be devastating for for the, those economies. So, you know, it, it's it's going to cause more supply chain disruptions and the higher prices all across the board. Well, first off, to your first point uh, about interest rates and the Fed, uh, you know, I think consensus has been that there is going to be a half a point increase in March, and that was right up until I think the invasion. Uh, I've seen the, the numbers now come out at a quarter point, and even now I'm, I'm listening to people say there's going to be zero action, you know, from the Fed. It's hard to say, but I would not be surprised for the Fed to, you know, blame this war for, for making no action at all. And that's going to be very, very positive for gold. I wouldn't be surprised to see gold gap up $100 uh, at the end of March when this all happens. And as it typically does, take silver up with it. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Correct me if I'm wrong, but a number of weapons, including Tomahawk missiles, use a lot of silver. We were chatting about this earlier mm -hmm. and about um, 500 ounces of silver goes into each Tomahawk missile. So what is the industrial case for silver in a war climate? Yeah, well, first off, what a waste of silver, <laughs> you know, having that silver spread all over the place. Uh, uh, is a terrible use. I'd rather that silver go into, you know, the green energy and the green move movement and, uh, you know, electrifying the planet in ways that we're trying to accomplish. But, uh, you know, it is, you're right, used in a variety of military weapons and tools, you know, from navigation systems to the weapons. And, uh, you know, it's it's uh, just one more, you know, uh, use of the metal. You know, we're seeing solar panels, we're seeing electric cars, now we're seeing military weaponry. On the flip side of that is the industrial use of silver may decline if we do see a global recession as a result of this conflict, if it doesn't spiral into a military escalation any more than it has, or e even if it does. Um, certainly, there's going to be an economic impact from these sanctions. And one could assume that that would lead to an economic slowdown. We were always already sort of toying with the possibility of a recession prior to this, what would that mean in terms of traditional silver demand on the industrial use case for everything from cars to fridges to electric appliances? Do you see that hampering that demand? Well, hopefully this stays regional. You know, you know, God forbid this uh, gets more uh, broad, you know, throughout Europe and, and elsewhere around the planet. But, uh, you know, if it stays regional, I think, you know, still the demand is there for solar panels. You know, we, I've seen numbers as high as 140 million ounces of demand in the solar industry. Uh, you know, we're likely going to approach 100 million ounces of demand in the automotive sector this year. You know, these industries are moving fast uh, to electrify the planet and get fuel combustion cars off, off you know, uh, the, the, the surface of the earth. So I don't think that's going to stop unless this war really escalates out of control. On one of the fundamentals driving silver, uh, solar panels is this move to clean energy, just referenced solar panels. Mm -hmm. One of the issues that has come up that has been highlighted is, of course, the major dependence um, of oil and gas. And many are seeing this as a wake up call to those that have been advocating to reduce uh, oil and gas and fossil fuel to energy, saying that perhaps this has been too an aggressive a move and it's time to scale it back a little bit to slow down the move away from fossil fuels and that perhaps that pushes the targets for going green a little further off on the horizon, that mm -hmm. the restrictions on oil and gas may be loosened in response to this. Mm -hmm. Does that have a near-term impact on the price of silver? 
Well, you know, it's it's hard to say. I think that uh, you're right. Uh, I, I think that thesis is coming out more, you know, among the experts that the new Green Deal and, you know, going green is, is not going to be as easy or, or quick as, as some politicians would like it to be, uh, you know, getting off oil and gas. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great goal, but it's not going to take 10 years or less. It's, this is a 50-year a process to change the electrical grid on the planet. And that's going to take a lot of silver and a lot of copper and a lot of other metals to accomplish that. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. And, and uh, I think the politicians are being unrealistic. And I think this war, you now it's very energy intensive. And I think, you know, countries around the world, I wouldn't be su uh, surprised to see Germany, for example, turn on their nuclear plants again. Uh, we're already seeing talks in Japan about them turning on the nuclear plants. So politicians are waking up to the fact that some of their objectives or goals are unrealistic. But it doesn't change the long-term trajectory, which is positive for silver. Or uh, even short-term, I think that uh, because... The demand is so great. The amount of ounces we need is so great. Like we're producing 800 million ounces a year as a mining sector. And you said yourself that we're consuming this year 1.1 billion ounces. That's a 300 million ounce deficit. Where's that silver going to come from? How long can you have these deficits before there's just simply no silver left? According to the Silver Institute, forecasting a record demand for silver this year, uh, setting a record at 1.112 billion ounces. That's beating last year, which was also a record, at 1.02 billion ounces. So that was before we had the situation mm -hmm. in Ukraine. Do you think that that is going to change, that there's going to be a higher demand than what we're seeing? You know, again, you know, if... if you said yourself, a cruise missile needs, you know, 15 kilos of silver or 500 ounces of silver. You know, hopefully they don't have to build many more cruise missiles. But, uh, you know, I think there's there's not enough silver around anyways to supply the auto industry and supply the solar panel industry or the electronic manufacturing industry. So we know the deficits exist, whether there's a war or not. I don't think that changes anything. And we have touched on this before, that there isn't enough uh, physical silver to back up the paper silver out mm -hmm. there, that the futures markets may distort things. Yeah. Uh, so how does that get fixed? By the mining sector standing up and saying we've had enough. Um, you know, when you, the, the silver market trades approximately 1 billion ounces a day in the paper market. And the miners produce 800 million ounces in a year. So the leverage is, is astronomical. So as long as the regulators stand by and do nothing about that, uh, and I don't expect they ever will, because you know, you know, generally speaking, you know, the banks are, you know, pretty powerful out there. You know, who, who, who's going to make, you know, who's going to stand up to that? It's got to be the miners. The miners have to get together, like OPEC, they you know, like the diamond industry, like the uranium industry. Why does silver and gold have to, you know, be treated differently as other commodities? What is your price outlook for silver for 2022? Well, you know, quite honestly, you know, you kind of touched on a little bit earlier, but, uh, you know, we're mining seven to one. So what I mean by that is for every one ounce of gold we mine worldwide, we mine, we mine seven ounces of silver. So, but we're trading at something in the order of 75 to one. So we traded at seven to one today at approximately 2000 hour gold. You know, it's at, um, you know, $150 silver approximately. That's where we should be today. So we're not obviously, but, um, you know, I'm not going to predict $150 you know, today, I am a triple digit silver guy, but I've dealt with it'll happen in 2022, but hopefully it happens in my lifetime. But do you have a number that you care to throw out there for 2022? Let's call it $30. $30 silver, oh, yeah. not quite triple digit, not even anywhere near <laughs> triple digit, no. but your life is still long. Yeah. So still very likely in your lifetime, Keith. Yeah. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3,000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, $1 million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany, as you can hear, and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. 
The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof. To the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.